welcome. I welcome you in the name of Christ. God's grace, mercy and peace be with you. Welcome to this act of worship, which has been coordinated by the CLIWA Initiative, the Church of England's response to modern slavery. My name is Chigo Chike. I am the vicar of uh, Emmanuel Church, this church where we are, which is in Forest Gate in East London. I am also one of the chaplains to the Queen. I have worked closely with the CLIWA Initiative to reach out to care for victims of modern slavery in our parish. So I'm really, really glad that you are able to join us for this service. Tomorrow, all around the country, people will be marking Anti-Slavery Day. Anti-Slavery Day provides an annual opportunity to think about modern slavery and reflect upon the suffering facing thousands of people every day. So, as we join together, we want to ask God to open our minds and hearts to notice our sisters and brothers trapped in modern slavery. We want to seek God's guidance in how we can play our part in honoring Jesus and loving our neighbors better, and to pray for those who are suffering in silence. We begin with the hymn, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. us pray. Holy God, as we gather to worship you, we acknowledge our easy indifference to those who are exploited as they provide goods and services which are only valued according to price, not with regard to those who make them. Lord, have mercy. We pray for all who are trapped in forced labor, sexual exploitation, 
forced begging, domestic servitude, forced organ donation, county lines drug trading, and forced marriage. Lord, have mercy. We ask that we might learn better to play our part in noticing the unnoticed, reaching out to the exploited, and changing values and behaviors in ourselves and our communities, and also changing our nation's policies and practices. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Now, Dr. Julia Tomas is now going to share her experience of modern slavery and homelessness and help us think further about how we as Christians can work together to identify and support victims. Hi, I'm Julia Thomas, the anti-slavery coordinator at The Passage. The Passage is a charity that supports homeless people in central London. We have a resource centre, an outreach team, various accommodation projects and various other support projects to prevent homelessness in the first place. I first started working in modern slavery during my PhD, where I was working with invisibility and how invisible victims of modern slavery are. I kept on working in academia, but at some point I really wanted to work uh, in the front line, so I moved to the third sector. We have now a modern slavery service at The Passage, and we support victims of modern slavery who are homeless in central London. We worked, since I worked at the Passage for several years, uh, we've been working on the links between homelessness and modern slavery, and the links are absolutely clear. When a person escapes the traffickers, they are homeless. When a person leaves government uh, uh, support, they might become homeless as well. And actually, when you think, being a victim of modern slavery is being homeless by definition, because even if they have a roof over their heads, they don't have a home. Also more worrying is that recruiters have been seen in day centres, winter shelters, Covid hotels and soup runs. And this is why the church is so important. Uh, church uh, staff, volunteers and attendees, they are our eyes and they are our ears. Uh, if you know how to spot the signs, you can identify potential victims and, and provide them with support. Actually, with Clear Initiative, we've been working on a project to have single points of contact in each parish. So when a person identifies a potential victim of modern slavery, they would know who to go to, and this person would provide and coordinate support until the person goes to a, a safe house, to a safe place. I would advise everybody to go to Clear Initiative website and to attend their courses on safeguarding, on homelessness and modern slavery, and various other uh, uh, courses that th they provide. Also, go and see their apps. They are really insightful. They are really useful. They've been helping to stop traffickers exploiting people in car washes and in the agricultural sector. So it is a pleasure and it is a privilege for me to work with Clear Initiative and I hope we will keep on working together for very many years because together we can fight modern slavery. Thank you. My name is Nikki Sweetman and I am a member of the Mothers' Union. I have spent the last three years raising awareness about modern slavery in my province this has involved resourcing diocesan presidents and speaking to meetings in order to cascade this awareness to our members. A reading from the book of the prophet Amos. The one who made Pleiades and Orion and turns deep darkness into the morning and darkens the day into night who calls for the waters of the sea and pours them out on the surface of the earth. The Lord is his name. Who makes destruction flash out against the strong so that destruction comes upon the fortress. They hate the one who reproves in the gate and they abhor the one who speaks the truth. Therefore, 
Because you trample on the poor and take from them levies of grain, you have built houses of hewn stone, but you shall not live in them. You have planted pleasant vineyards, but you shall not drink their wine. For I know how many are your transgressions and how great are your sins. You who afflict the righteous, who take a bribe and push aside the needy in the gate. Therefore the prudent will keep silent in such a time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil that you may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, will be with you, just as you have said. Hate evil and love good, and establish justice in the gate. It may be that the Lord, the God of hosts, will be gracious to the remnant of Joseph. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello, my name is Heather Grinstead and I'm a Salvation Army officer appointed as Deputy Director of the Anti-Trafficking and Modern Slavery Unit for the United Kingdom and Ireland Territory. The Salvation Army supports victims of modern slavery from the moment that they are identified, protecting and supporting them until they are settled in communities. A reading from the book of James, chapter 5, verses 1 to 4. Come now, you rich people, weep and wail for the miseries that are coming to you. Your riches have rotted, and your clothes are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have rusted, and their rust will be evidence against you, and it will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure for the last days. Listen! The wages of the labourers who mowed your fields which you kept back by fraud, cry out. And the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our preacher today is the Right Reverend Simon Button Jones, Bishop of Tonbridge. Over the years in Rochester Diocese, he has supported his staff and volunteers to take action against modern slavery and he has also worked closely with the CLIWA initiative providing inputs and contributing to devotional materials such as this year's Lent with us. Our cities were built on slavery and they continue to be resourced by it. There are an estimated 46 million slaves globally and it's naive for us to think that we don't depend on some of them. From the mineral-rich mines of the DRC to the garment factories of Bangladesh, from fruit pickers in the home counties to cheap takeaways in the gig economy, our shiny modern consumer lives are dependent on a trade so dark and iniquitous, it is astonishing that we tolerate it so readily. Slaves are forced into agriculture, construction, hospitality, manufacturing, retail, domestic settings, sexual exploitation and menial service on the open seas. They are all around us and yet they are not. Like ghosts, they are not visible to most and not believed in by some either. The prophet Amos tells us the God who stretched out a universe of unfathomable size pays attention to those who abuse the poor. Those who build grand houses won't live in them, and those who plant gorgeous vineyards won't drink their wine. Today, however, slavery pays very nicely for those who traffic in it. Humans are a resource that can be used and used again. It's calculated that forced labourers deliver $8,000 profit to their abusers every year. Sex traffickers make $36,000 annual profit out of their desperate victims, according to the expert 
Siddharth Kara. Lives of comfort are lived by those who abuse slaves, mocking the promise of Amos. The mighty are still on their thrones and the humble poor are being ground into the dust. It's like a dark gospel taunting the coming kingdom. Spiritual redemption has its originating story in the liberation of slaves from oppression. The gift of a day's rest in seven, the Jewish Sabbath, marks freedom from relentless seven days a week graft, which no human body can stand in the long run. It also prefigures the divine rest we shall inherit at the end of all things. For slaves today, there is no rest, and where there is no rest, there is no hope. There's an interesting turn of phrase in our reading from the letter of James. It says, The wages of the labourers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. So it's true. Money talks. But all the while we imagine it is conferring access fame and privilege, it's actually transmitting on a frequency we can't hear, with a message we can't ignore. We need to retrain our minds so that we hear with our eyes. Our vision is drawn to things of beauty. There is a palpable bias to what looks nice. The advertising industry is predicated on it, but so is our worship when we use images of outstanding natural beauty as a backdrop for our engagement with God. What is superficially ugly or repulsive, we keep just out of sight, like the sun we learn not to stare at. In the parable of the sheep and the goats, it's the hungry and the thirsty, the stranger and the threadbare, the sick and the prisoner, whom we look straight through. These are not people at their best, and they do not look their best. And tellingly, neither the sheep nor the goats recognise Jesus in the needy. To hear with our eyes, we have to pay attention to detail. The first hurdle is disbelief. The struggle to accept slaves are moving around us as surely as shoppers in a mall. We imagine the effects of evil somewhere just beyond the horizon, but they are poisoning the ground we walk on. And it's precisely in our neighbourhoods that we are most likely to spot the patterns of people being dropped off or collected for work, the signs of people broken by coercive control, the fear and defeat in the faces of people swimming in abuse. We can train ourselves for this, and we can be trained by those with the skills. The Kluwer Initiative has a safe car wash app and a farm work welfare app that can be downloaded to help us. We do not have to tackle the problem personally. Police forces and related agencies have the skills, the resources and statutory powers to take action. We can report what we suspect on the modern slavery helpline. No one on the end of that line will be cross if we get it wrong. They will be glad we're taking it seriously. We each have a modern slavery footprint. There are even ways of showing this to us. So we can take small steps to change our dependency. And there is another one we can make. Prayers of intercession, persistent, focused, undeterred, have remarkable power that is unrestrained by our personal circumstances. Slavery is the fastest growing international crime. It is the stronghold that keeps adding extensions. But it is not a building that the cruel and merciless will live in. Amos said it, across the ages, his prophecy is a challenge to our prayers. 
we declare our faith in the God who gives life, loves life, and restores life from suffering and death. We say together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hi, my name's Roz, and this is Kat. Um, we belong to an organisation called CLAMS, which stands for Christians in Leicester and Leicestershire Against Modern Slavery. And uh, we work throughout Leicester Diocese, uh, trying to start conversations with different churches from different denominations about the issues of modern slavery in our city and county and raising awareness. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the many organisations working to bring an end to modern day slavery. For those agencies investigating exploitation, give them wisdom, determination and perseverance as they seek to bring perpetrators to justice and rescue survivors. For organisations supporting survivors, give them the resources they need to offer physical and emotional care to those who have been traumatised by their experiences. For groups and charities that seek to raise awareness of modern slavery, give them commitment and creativity as they bring these issues to the wider public. We pray particularly for the Clura Initiative. Thank you for the lead the Church has taken through Clura, for all the training and support given to local churches and communities, and for campaigns and resources. Inspire and encourage Clura staff, and use their efforts to mobilise many churches and communities and ultimately to identify and care for victims of modern slavery. Amen. Amen. God of all comfort, Father to the fatherless, we pray for victims of modern slavery. We lift up to you those li living and working in exploitative conditions. Surround them with your presence and speak your words of truth and comfort into their hearts and lives wherever they are and show them that they are deeply and extravagantly loved. We pray for pathways and clear possibilities to be made known to those living and working in situations of modern slavery. Lord, give them the courage to speak out, to seek help, to find a way forward into a better life. Give them hope and strength and access to the information and the people that they need to bring about transformation in their lives. God of justice and mercy, we pray for our government we lament at the profound injustices that we see written into government policy and practice. And we cry out to you for the immense changes that are desperately needed. We know that your heart is turned towards those in distress and in great need. So we pray that you would act on behalf of the victims of modern slavery in our towns, villages and cities across the UK. We pray for your challenge and conviction in the hearts of UK government ministers and decision makers. Lord, would you speak to them in a way they can't ignore? We pray for movers and shakers from every political party to develop a deep and uncomfortable passion for those in situations of modern slavery. We pray that you'd give them the wisdom, the resources, the opportunities and the courage to take action for change. Open the eyes of government policymakers and lead them. Amen. Amen. Lord, we pray that our eyes will be open to see injustice in the world and recognise the part that we play. Forgive us when we choose to ignore that injustice because it involves a cost to us. Help us to give our support to those who are speaking up for the exploited and give us eyes to see those around us who may be victims of modern slavery. May we have the courage and wisdom to take appropriate action. Amen. We say together... Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. God, our light and our salvation, illuminate our lives that we may see your goodness in the land of the living, and looking on your beauty may be changed into the likeness of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Hello, my name is Jason Roach. In 2018, the Bishop launched a Lent appeal to raise awareness around issues of modern day slavery. And that awakened a passion, passion to ensure that churches in London had the best available wisdom on how to respond pastorally to people who had been identified as victims of modern day slavery. And so the Modern Day Slavery Steering Group was born. And that brought together experts from a number of different areas, clergy people and volunteers working in local churches, uh, those who ran safe houses, people involved in training, wisdom from the Kluwer Initiative and beyond. And over the last couple of years, we've been able to achieve a number of different things. We've been able to offer training, training to those who are working in this area and volunteering. And not just training, but training that means that they in turn might be able to train others in the future. Secondly, we've been able to develop a clear pathway so that if someone comes along to a local church, there might be someone there who could know what the next steps are and where to signpost people so that they do get the best possible care as they walk through uh, the, the help that's available for them. We've also wanted to make sure that the voices of survivors are heard and are part of how we work out how best to support people. So we've been able to listen to stories and in some cases we've been able to share those stories more widely so that people get a sense of the impact that modern day slavery has on people's lives. And finally, we've been able to set up a pilot project and that pilot project has connected a local church with uh, some of the work of one of the national providers of help and support for those who come to uh, the government system and get help through that. And what that's meant is that as people get help, say, with um, counselling or signposting, they are part of a community of care that begins to help them as they seek to get back on their feet. All of these things are just a start, but praise God for the progress that we've made. Thank you for joining us today. Now, having personally studied and written about the transatlantic slave trade, that evil uh, trade, I know that it thrived because many people who were benefiting from it somehow were not aware of the full extent of its barbarity. We mustn't allow that to be the case with modern slavery. If you would like to know more, if you want to find out how you can get involved, why not get in touch with the CLEWA initiative? You can visit the CLEWA website or send an email to the CLEWA initiative. The CLEWA initiative exists to support churches, to help them to identify and to help those who are victims of modern slavery. Churches and communities that want to play a part can get in touch with the CLEWA initiative and be supported in that process. Now is the time for each one of us to get involved, to try to make a difference in this situation. God of all grace, whose love desires the flourishing of all your children, send us out to witness to this transforming power and to be agents of such amazing grace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. We end our service today with a wonderful hymn of commitment. It reminds us that as we step out in faith, our Savior is always near. O oh Jesus, I have promised. <laughs> 